How's it going, guys? Medium difficulty question, path renal, step one, past level question, and trauma medicine, surgery 2CK. Before you get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give me a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, element underscore medical, M E H L M N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to Telegram, Griffin channel down below. Now start the clip. 74 year old woman brought to the ED found after being found beside the staircase in her home by her husband unconscious. Vitals are stable. Examination shows diffuse movement to painful stimuli. She has a history of essential hypertension, managed hydrochlorothiazide. She does not drink or smoke. Laboratory studies show serum potassium elevated 5.5 should be 3.5 to 5. Blood urination elevated 30 should be 20 or lower. Cratinine elevated 2.2 should be 0 0.7 1.2. Once we've hit a cratinine of 2, we've lost 90% of our renal function. Urine blood 3 plus, urine RBCs 3 to 4 pi powered field. Which of the following most likely we see in this patient? Let's just whip through the answer choice here. Choice A, decreased serum albumin, wrong fucking answer. Vignette shows us no uh, buzzy descriptors such as periorbital edema, pedal edema, sacral edema, ascites. We don't have any of that here, let alone the fact that we could consider high yield nephrotic syndromes, membranous glomerular nephropathy, diabetic glomerular sclerosis, renal amyloidosis, focal segmental glomerular sclerosis, minimal change disease, the latter nine out of 10 times pediatrics, but it can be an adult if you have Hodgkin lymphoma. None of those apply here. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased serum phosphate, wrong fucking answer. And we instantaneously know it's wrong because in renal insufficiency, phosphate's always high, not low. So PTH normally prevents the reabsorption of phosphate in the PCT, okay? PTH causes the trashing of phosphate from the kidney. We lose phosphate under the action of PTH normally. Well, if the kidney's fucked up, we can't do that. So we have too much reabsorption of phosphate in the PCT, let alone the fact that we have decreased filtration, so phosphate will be retained that way as well. Phosphate is always an up hour in renal failure. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, elevated creatine kinase, correct answer. Now, diagnosis, rhabdomyolysis, and we have release of creatine kinase by muscle lysis. US really loves giving you one of two vignettes for rhabdomyolysis. The first is an alcoholic, and we'll just say 44-year-old dude found in a park, alcohol, huge, huge risk factor for rhabdo. Obviously, things like uh, McArdle syndrome, okay, intense exercises can cause rhabdo, but when I think of two main vignettes, I think of alcoholism and i think of uh this one here where they'll tell you a patient is found beside staircase in a home they love giving you this vignette can be a younger patient older patient doesn't matter probably implies muscle injury okay of some kind so when we have lysis of skeletal muscle not only will serum potassium go up but and creatine kinase go up but we're gonna have a release of myoglobin myoglobin is nephrotoxic can cause acute tubular necrosis, further causing elevation of serum potassium. The question need not tell you muddy brown, dirty brown granular cast, brown pigmented cast for acute tubular necrosis. But if we are forced to select a renal diagnosis in this case, we would still choose acute tubular necrosis. Now, urine dipstick cannot differentiate free myoglobin in the setting of rhabdomyolysis from hemoglobin that's on RBCs. So if we do a urine dipstick for blood, it's going to be positive, 2 plus, 3 plus, they can tell you. But when we do light microscopy looking for RBCs, it's negative. So we call this a false positive blood on urine dipstick. It looks like we have hemoglobin in the urine. It looks like we have RBCs in the urine. Dipstick can't differentiate RBC hemoglobin from free myoglobin. But when we do light microscopy, the RBCs aren't actually there. Student says, wait, but there's three to four pi powered field. That's negative. I've seen this as negative on a surgery question in particular. If they want positive, there's no specific number, but they'll give you 20, 50, 100, okay? They'll give you a higher number. Zero to one, three to four, negative. So it's called a false positive blood on your dipstick. I'd say maybe this is half of rhabdomyolysis renal findings. The other half, they'll be easier. They'll just say brown pigmented casts, muddy, dirty brown granular casts for straight up acute tubular necrosis, far easier that way. So let's just look through the final answers here. Choice D interstitial nephritis, wrong fucking answer. So this is classically going to be eosinophils in the urine, white blood cells in the urine, secondary to beta lactam, cephalosporin, NSAID, maculopapular rash, only about 50% of patients. So that scenario of the white blood cells, eosinophils in the urine, that's going to be about four out of five questions. One out of five questions will be a combination. So two out of 10, I'd say one out of 10 will be uh, just someone who's on chronic NSAIDs with peripheral edema, and they can say that that's chronic interstitial nephritis. You're like, wait, how is that not pre-renal pre azotemia? It could be. It's fucking weird. I agree with you, but I've seen it as chronic interstitial nephritis as an answer. 
Um, it can also be a one out of 10 question. will be a patient who's on an NSAID and they'll just say mild hematuria, proinuria, and nothing else. Nothing about eosinophils, nothing about a rash. And the answer is just interstitial nephritis. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, proliferative glomerular nephritis, wrong fucking answer. So this is another way of writing PSGN, post-streptococcal glomerular nephritis. It's weird, okay? If you were to go to the Wikipedia article for PSGN, it says, AKA, proliferative glomerular nephritis. So not diffuse proliferative glomerular nephritis, which is SLE, not membrana proliferative glomerular nephritis, which would be red urine, someone who has hepatitis C or malignancy, but just PSGN, type 3 hypersensitivity, strep pyogeny, so it can be from pharyngitis, can be from a skin infection such as impetigo, erysipelas, cellulitis. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal to make more content. I feel like my stuff's grimacing. Appreciate your time. That's it.